So the past KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, EU2023 had a strong focus on environmental sustainability and it was brought upon multiple times. The tag environment sustainability, which is a part of CNCF, uh, had a, quite a few mentions in the keynotes and, you know, all those sessions. And then there are rising a number of projects that are coming in for the sustainability to, you know, counter the carbon emissions and how we can uh, enable those, tweak those, auto scale based on certain settings and the criteria to reduce the carbon footprint of the servers where our workloads are running. So in this video, we'll be talking about one such tool called Cube Green. I already discussed this tool uh, in one of my episodes on uh, Jai and Cloud Native, which is actually a series that I run on Twitch um, in Hindi in my native language. But I'll be discussing it here now uh, a bit and into a demo. Before that, this video is brought to you by Cisco, Commodore, Cystic, and Slim. They are the supporters who sponsor my time in creating these videos. Uh, so do check them out and let's uh, get started. So this is Cube Green, an operator to reduce the CO2 footprint on your Kubernetes clusters. So what it does is it basically can make your pods go to sleep and suspend your pods when the workload is not there, when no one is using them, scale down your cluster and save energy. In turn, it reduces the CO2 emissions and for which they are actually creating a dashboard as well, like how much impact with using this tool you have created in reducing the CO2 footprint of the workloads that you are running. So we all know that we are running different environments. We are running dev stage production and we are using a lot of resources for our development and staging. A lot of resources we use for the development and staging and the preview, whatever you can call this, all those environments regularly on weekends, on nights. Obviously, that's a waste of resource and money because we don't need those resources to run. Cube Green is a simple case add-on that automatically shuts down some of the resources when you do not need them. And they have a simple calculations that they have done based on uh, certain assumptions. Now, how many uh, CO2 is produced by a pod? So this is what is mentioned based on certain assumptions which are there. So you can say emissions for a cloud server using 100% green electricity. So 160 kg CO2 per year and server. So this is coming from the goclimate.com. They have taken a one node is one server with two CPUs and 15 pods per node. So that is the assumptions that they have taken. And this is the calculator that becomes. So with the assumption, with the above assumption, CO2 per pod in a year becomes 11 kg. A per week results without the cube green, without using this cube green add-on is calculated to be around 21. And with cube green is 15. So the difference per week for saving in one particular server can be up to 16. So that's how much you can be impactful with one server, with one node of two CPUs. And you can calculate the number of huge clusters that you'll be running for your dev stage kind of environments and how much CO2 you can save. So how it works. So the use of cube green is very simple. Once installed on the cluster that we'll be definitely doing, there is a custom resource that we'll be creating. The CRD is called sleep info. And in this configuration, it is possible to configure sleep and the wake up time for a particular namespace. So you can define a specific time uh, where these pods will, or these specific uh, deployments will go to sleep. And then also the wake up time, like when they'll wake up. The CRD is very simple. You have sleep info and you define weekdays, one to five, uh, sleep at like all the weekdays, sleep at 8 p.m. and wake up at 8 a.m. And you can specify the time zone, uh, suspending the cron jobs through excluding reference, exclude reference. So this is what you can exclude over there. So what all resources are handled at the moment? Deployments and cron jobs. So by default on sleep, deployments are stopped if not excluded so if you don't have anything in excluded the deployments will get stopped and if you want to suspend uh, cron jobs then set the suspend cron jobs also to true which is here that we just mentioned and waking up means it will try to restore the status of the resource before sleeping so to sleep a deployment replicas are set to zero to wake up the number of replicas are set to the number of replicas that was there before sleeping 
and for the cron job sleep means they are suspended wake up means the suspend field is restored and the state of the resources before the sleep is saved in a secret with the name of sleep info in the particular namespace so that's how it's done let's try to install it and see it in action because then we'll be able to understand better how it works so this is killer coda kubernetes 1.27 cluster which is up and running now we'll try to install cube green over here before cube green you also need to have cert manager to be installed so let's have cert manager installed first so we install cert manager once we have cert manager installed we can install cube green so let's install that so the cube green is installed we can actually check cube c can get pods cycle a so we can see cube green is creating all the cert manager stuff is up and running so for this particular demo, we'll continue to use the same tutorial that is mentioned. Let's keep on doing that, uh, creating a namespace, creating a deployment echo service, replica one with image echo service, then a deployment called do not sleep, then a deployment called echo service replica four, that is of replicas four with the same image, but a different name. So there is one replica deployment, there's a four replica deployment, and there's a deployment with again one replica but do not sleep so four five and six six pods yeah so six pods will be running so let's create this everything is created kubectl get pods if and then sleep me so we can see all the pods are getting created and running and now what we'll do is we'll create the custom resource of sleep test so let's do it vi sleep.yaml so this is sleep info and the sleep me namespace, but the namespace that we have is kubectl get ns sleep me. Yes. So for the sleep me namespace, for all weekdays, we want to sleep at every two minutes and wake up at every three minutes. So actually I want to do it kind of quickly. So this one is sleep every fifth minute and wake up every seventh minute. We have actually shortened the duration to sleep every second minute and wake up every third minute. And we want to exclude the deployment in this particular namespace. So that means do not sleep deployment pod should still stay and rest others should be sleeping and creating backup every second in the third minute. So let's apply this. So it is created kubectl get pod siphon and sleep me watch. So you can see do not sleep one is still there and rest all have just went away. So we'll keep watching the pod and we'll fast forward the video so that we can see that the pods are terminating and then container creating with respect to the sleep.yaml that we have applied and sleep.yaml is nothing but the sleep info. Uh, it is also possible to have a configuration to have fixed intervals. So you can do uh, sleep at this and wake up at this with a specific time zone that you want to do. So you can see after some time, it automatically created all those replicas as well, like the four replicas of the deployment where we specified four replicas and one replica of deployment where we specified one replica. And that particular pod, which is do not sleep is always running. Now, again, after the specified interval that we have, it should again go in the terminating state. Coming to the metrics, cube green also exposes a Prometheus matrix, which is current sleep info, GOS type matrix, info about the sleep info resource with information about the name and the position where the sleep info is installed. So this also is there. You can also see the small cluster, the use case and the difference in the emissions and how much can be saved for a small cluster and for a large cluster up to how much can be saved the CO2 emission. So there are already all these adopters that are using cube green. So you can see the termination has started. So after the specified interval, the pods are getting terminated. And if you again see, it will be only one pod, which is there, which is that do not sleep one that we added in the exclude reference of that. So that was a very short video on a cube green, pretty neat and decent project, which is there with a simple clear cut use case uh, that can help in reducing the CO2 emissions. Uh, so I think get involved in the tag environment sustainability and also uh, we'll try to look at some of the other tooling which is there. Uh, there was also an integration with Keda that was announced at KubeCon. 
So we'll go through that as well in the coming videos where we talk about more such tools that can create an impact on the environment which is there. So if you happen to use Cube Green, uh, do let me know in the comment section or if any similar tooling that you're using to capture or reduce the carbon footprint or get to know the resources or how much emissions that your clusters and workloads are creating. So do let me know that in the comments. And yeah, do not forget to do the regular stuff, liking the video, sharing it with your friends and making sure you subscribe and press that little bell icon so that you do not miss any new notification from this particular channel, which is there. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, subscribing makes the notified, it's 99% other people who are watching the video are non-subscribers so i would encourage you if you are watching the video to subscribe to the channel and uh, taking it to the next level and we'll keep bringing such videos to you thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one